In this example, we're given an initial value problem that we can't solve using the methods that we learned earlier in the course. Um, and that's because of this t right there. Because we have a variable coefficient on this y prime, we're going to need to use the Laplace transform in order to solve this. Um, so let's start off by taking the Laplace transform of both sides. So we get the Laplace transform y double prime plus 2 times the Laplace transform of ty prime minus 4 times the Laplace transform of y um, is equal to the Laplace transform of 1, which we know is 1 over x. All right, now um, let's, we know that the Laplace transform of y double prime is going to be equal to s squared times the Laplace transform of y minus s times y of 0, but y of 0 is 0 in this problem. So that's going to be just 0, and then minus uh, y prime of 0, which is also 0. So here's um, the Laplace transform of the second derivative is going to be this. Now the Laplace transform of t uh, times y prime is going to be equal to the uh, negative derivative with respect to s of the Laplace transform of y prime. And the Laplace transform of the derivative is um, um, the is s times the Laplace transform of the function minus uh, y of zero, which is zero. So that's um, that's that there. And then the derivative of this uh, we can find using the the product rule. So this is negative s times the uh, the derivative of this. So the Laplace transform of y prime minus because that negative uh, the derivative of s, which is one times the Laplace transform of y. All right. So now we can plug this in for the Laplace transform of ty prime, and we can plug this in for the Laplace transform of the second derivative. So this is going to give us s squared times the Laplace transform of y um, minus 2s times the Laplace transform of y prime minus 2 times the Laplace transform of y and then minus 4 times the Laplace transform of y is equal to 1 over s. All right, now let's, uh, let's get our Laplace transforms of y. Let's combine those together. So that we're going to put this out front. So this is negative 2s times the Laplace transform of y prime uh, plus s squared minus 2 minus 4, so s squared minus 6 times the Laplace transform of y is equal to 1 over s. All right, let me give myself some room here. And let's, um, let's go ahead and divide everything by negative 2s to get this by itself. So if we do that, we're going to get the Laplace transform of y prime plus um, this divided by negative 2s is going to be uh, 3 divided by s minus s divided by 2 times uh, the Laplace transform of y is equal to uh, dividing by 2s, we're going to get negative 1 over 2s squared. All right. 
Now, I, although I said earlier that uh, I really like writing these uh, fancy L's, I am going to uh, replace this just for convenience sake. I'm going to define uh, capital F as being um, the Laplace transform of Y. Uh, and I'm using F. The, the book uses capital Y, but my capital Ys look a lot like my lowercase Ys. So just to be to make that distinction, I'm going to use F, capital F. Um, and uh, so now we can. This is going to be F prime plus three over S minus S over two times F is equal to negative one over two S squared. And I wanted to do that because now we can see that what we've got, we've we've done the Laplace transform, we've gotten into the S domain, but now what we've got ended up with here is a differential equation. And but this is a differential equation that we can use, so, um, can solve using the methods that we learned earlier in the course. Specifically, we can use uh, an integrating factor on this. So our integrating factor, remember mu, is going to be equal to e to the integral of this, the integral of uh, 3 over s minus s over 2 ds. And that's going to be equal to uh, e to the natural log of s cubed minus s squared squared over 4. And uh, we can write that e to the natural log of s cubed is just s cubed uh, times e to the negative s squared over 4. So there's our mu. That's our integrating factor. And so the solution to this is going to be given by multiplying this times f. So we get s cubed e to the negative s squared over 4 times f is equal to this mu times uh, negative 1 over 2s squared. So negative 1 over 2, uh, 2s squared times s cubed e to the negative s squared over 4. And now we, uh, oh, sorry, this is not, we want the, deri the derivative of this with respect to s is equal to this. And now we can, uh, we can take the integral of both sides. So we're going to get s cubed e to the negative s squared over 4 times f is equal to the integral of, uh, let's see, s, the s cubed divided by s squared is just going to be s. So this is negative 1 half s um, times e to the negative s squared over 4 ds. All right, now to do the integral here, um, notice that if we, if we uh, uh, define some function f as e to the negative s squared over 4, then f prime would be uh, using the chain rule uh, e to the negative s squared over 4 times the derivative of this, which is going to be uh, s or negative s over 2, which is this. And so the integral of this is just going to be this. Uh, so we've got s cubed e to the negative s squared over 4 f is equal to uh, e to the negative s squared over 4 plus c. All right. Let's come back up here. And um, let's divide both sides by this and get f by itself. So f is equal to um, this divided by this is just going to be 1 over s cubed plus 
uh, C divided by S cubed times E to the positive S squared over 4. That's just C divided by all of this. All right, now we've come to an important uh, element of the Laplace transform here. Remember when we first defined the Laplace transform, it was the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the uh, at, et cetera. Um, so this is uh, an, an important element or an important um, property of the Laplace transform is that the limit as s approaches infinity of the Laplace transform of any function of s is going to be equal to zero. This is always going to go to zero as s goes to infinity. And you may have noticed that with all of the um, Laplace transforms in our table. They all have an s in the denominator. There's, all some, there's always some reason that s is, as s goes to infinity, the Laplace transform is going to go to zero. So this is going to be an important thing to remember. So let me kind of double uh, box that in. Um, because this is going to help us to be able to go forward from here. Because notice that um, in order for the limit of this as s goes to infinity uh, to be zero, uh, our c has to be zero. Because here we've got an, e, er, an s squared in the exponent. We've got this s cubed in the denominator here. But uh, an exponent of s squared over 4 is going to grow a lot faster than this denominator of s cubed. And so the only way for this to go to 0 is if c is 0. So we can eliminate this whole thing here because of this. And we're left with um, f, which let's now uh, go back and replace our f with the Laplace transform of y is just equal to 1 over s cubed. Which means that y is equal to, well, we can rewrite this a little bit. Uh, let's, let's put a 2 over s to the 2 plus 1. Um, because that's that's one of our uh, our Laplace transforms in our table, uh, but if we multiply by two, we have to also divide by two. So we're going to end up with one half times t squared. The inverse Laplace transform of this piece here is going to be t squared. So taking the inverse Laplace transform of this, we get y is equal to one half t squared, and that is our solution to this initial value problem.